Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Did Shakespeare. My name is Cassidy Cash, that Shakespeare girl, and each week I come on here to share with you an interesting question about Shakespeare and then provide a plausible, or sometimes not, answer to the question to help us start an interesting conversation about the life of William Shakespeare so that you can understand his plays better. So let's dive in. Did you know that Galileo and Shakespeare were born the same year? They were both born in 1564. Two of the greatest minds in history were on the earth at the exact same time. It's pretty exciting. So that brings us to this week's question of, did Shakespeare know Galileo? In 1609, while Shakespeare was writing his sonnets and trying not to die of the outbreaks of plague that were going on in England, Galileo was discovering the telescope. It had been invented by a man in another country, but Galileo got a hold of it and built his own. And he was using it to look at the heavens and make new discoveries about science and the planets and their motion. Galileo discovered through his observations that the planets moved around the sun. He was surprised by his observation and it refuted the current Aristotle version of believing things. Aristilian, I think is the word that you say there. A smarter brain than me can learn how to say that word. But basically, Aristotle had a theory about the universe that the Holy Roman Emperor and the Catholic Church really ascribed to, and they thought that this was the way that things ought to be. Well, Galileo's observations led him to a different conclusion. As anyone who studied the scientific method knows, that's kind of what you do. You make observations, and then what you have found may support or refute your conclusions. So Galileo was being really scientific, but it made a lot of people mad. So Galileo was making a whole lot of noise in Europe at the time because he was putting out these really controversial statements. And Galileo himself enjoyed a great deal of notoriety. He was a well-known figure in science and he was a popular professor at the university where he taught. So people were listening to what he had to say and being pretty shocked at what he was putting out there. After all, he was challenging centuries of thought with observations with the newfangled telescope that people were probably skeptical about in the first place. Now, we don't know if if Galileo and Shakespeare ever met personally. I don't know of any evidence saying that they did. If you do, please share it in the comments because I think that would be fascinating. What we do know is that Shakespeare was friends with a British astronomer named Thomas Diggs, and Diggs knew of Galileo and had read Galileo's works. Thomas Diggs agreed with Galileo that the planets moved around the sun and that the sun was the center of the universe. And it's likely he would have shared these thoughts with William Shakespeare. Now, we can see a lot of Galilean and Copernican theory appear in the text of Shakespeare's plays. For example, in Hamlet, he says, and count myself a king of infinite space. Then in Cymbeline, there's a quote that says, Oh, learned indeed were the astronomers that knew the stars as I his characters. In this play's final scene on the stage, Jupiter descends surrounded by four angels, which is thought to be a nod to the planet and its four moons, which was key discovery by Galileo. And so Shakespeare is thought to be nodding to Galileo. And this is evidence that Shakespeare would have known about Galileo's theories. Now, there are some Shakespeare scholars that like to argue Shakespeare was just a literary man. You know, he was a playwright and he only did the arts and you can't do both. Well, seeing as personally, I have a degree in English and I paid for that degree in English by teaching calculus, I don't really ascribe to the theory that you can't do both art and science. I think that both of those things go together very well and that Shakespeare was an example of this, but that's another rant for another day. What I want to share with you today is I think it's almost impossible for Shakespeare to have not been aware of the scientific revolution going on in Europe during his lifetime. It was massive and it was everywhere. And his contemporaries can be tied to scientific groups and clubs. People like Sir Walter Riley were establishing organizations like his School of Night that got together astronomers and mathematicians and philosophers for the purpose of discussing and debating new and scientific theories exactly like what Galileo was putting forth about the Copernican theory of the universe and a heliocentric universe and the idea that the sun was the center. This is what would have been the common conversation of the day. And it was fashionable to be knowledgeable in science 
and to present yourself as a learned person. So it's really doubtful that Shakespeare would have been wholly ignorant of all these things. And the plethora of references to stars and astronomy in his works suggest that Shakespeare was at least knowledgeable in this area. Whether or not he was a science expert, you know, he didn't make his career being a scientist, he made his career being a playwright. So maybe he wasn't, but I think he was educated. So let me give you some examples from Shakespeare's life of what was going on in this scientific revolution around Shakespeare's life. In 1543, Three, Copernicus published his book on the revolutions of the heavenly spheres, which is the Copernican theory we keep referencing here, the idea that the planets move around the sun. Galileo discovered evidence for this theory later, but the book was already in print and published when Shakespeare was born. Additionally, a supernova lights up the night sky in 1572. This one is called the Tycho Star because a man named Tycho Bray, which was also a contemporary of William Shakespeare, observed the star in Denmark and he was a scientist and wrote a lot about it. But that particular supernova was visible from England. Thomas Diggs, William Shakespeare's friend and astronomer, he published a book supporting the Copernican theory in 1576. And it's reasonable to think if your friend writes a book, you're gonna read it. And we do know that Shakespeare was well read. He has lots of source material he pulls from to create his plays in the first place. Shakespeare has already been established by posterity and historical research that he was a well-read man. It's completely reasonable to think that he would have picked up Thomas Diggs's book and known about that theory. One of the specific things, because remember earlier we mentioned the quote from Hamlet and count myself a king of infinite space, one of the key statutes of the Copernican theory is the suggestion that maybe the universe is infinite. Another famous scientist named Gerardus Mercator, no idea if I'm saying his name right. I'm so sorry if you're like related to him and you love his name, you can give me a pronunciation guide. He was a scientist that published a great atlas on this concept in 1595 when Shakespeare was already popular in London. And the star that we think of as Kepler's star, yep, that would be Johann Kepler, the famous scientist, exploded in 1604. This one was specifically in England. Shakespeare could not have missed that it was going on. There were also recorded eclipses of the sun and the moon going on in England, visible from England, when Shakespeare was living. And so this would have been a huge topic of the day. I mean, if you can imagine, eclipses are massive events today. They were just as fascinating when Shakespeare was writing. Francis Bacon wrote his book on how science ought to be done in 1605. And Galileo's famous book on the starry messenger was published while Shakespeare was still living in 1613. I've no idea if Shakespeare read the starry messenger or not. I'm just saying he was contemporary. And these books were circulate, circulating? These books were around when Shakespeare was writing his plays. You have Julius Caesar comparing himself to the North Star. You have Romeo and Juliet analyzing the rising sun. In King Lear, they talk about eclipses of the sun and moon, and the eclipse that took place in England happened in 1605, which is one of the years that is suggested as a time King Lear could have been written. They date King Lear to have been written sometime between 1603 and 1606. They really think it was 1603 or 1605, but concede that 1606 was possible. So it's right around this time that he was watching these eclipses go on that he wrote about eclipses in King Lear. I think those are related. To me, that's definitely evidence that he was aware. In Hamlet, one of the characters says, make thy two eyes like stars start from their spheres. All of this is very poetic language that happens to connect with astronomy. And a lot of scholars will come in and say, oh, well, you're stretching things too far to think that Shakespeare had a working knowledge of science and astronomy. He's just poetic and he likes to talk about the stars. I guess you could say that, but I think to draw that conclusion, you have to be completely ignoring the massive scientific revolution that was going on in England and Europe during this time period. And I think that's just negligent scholarship, basically, um, to try and treat Shakespeare like you do other literature. Like when you get a degree in English, they teach you to study the text um, exclusive of the life of the writer. And I think Shakespeare is an example of where you can't do that. You can't study Shakespeare out of context because so much of his work, like the references of the eclipse in King Lear, the same year that there were eclipses in England, that matters. And it changes the way that you 
interpret the play. And it changes the way that you will stage the play when you understand what was going on for the audience at the time. It's not a random reference to stars because you like being poetic that way. It's a reference to the stars because you're watching them in the sky and crazy things are happening and you are expressing that because it is relevant to the culture of the day. For example, Shakespeare contemporaries like Sir Walter Riley were in the audience that Shakespeare was performing to. And Shakespeare's, one of Shakespeare's greatest strengths is how well he understood his audience. He knew that he was going to have to perform this play at court where men like Sir Walter Riley were participating. They were going to sit there, they were going to see the play, and they needed to like it. Shakespeare needed these people to enjoy his play. And so I think it was probably strategic on Shakespeare's part to include these references to Galileo, to include these references to Copernican theory, because he wanted to include things that his audience would connect with, that his audience would already grasp onto and say, oh, I really like that. While I agree that we can't know what Shakespeare believed personally from what we see in his plays, I do think that understanding the life and times of William Shakespeare makes interpreting plays like King Lear and Hamlet and Cymbeline make more sense. It's not just a, you know what, I think I'll randomly have Jupiter descend onto the stage surrounded by four angels. It had a purpose. And that changes the way that you stage these plays. It changes the way that you pronounce the lines even, because the inclusion of these astronomical, numerical, and star-like phrases is reflective of the culture in which Shakespeare was living. And it's reflective of, the, of how aware he was of his audience and trying to draw them into the production which has to be artificial somewhat today because audience members aren't necessarily reading Galileo and reading Copernican theory the way they were in 17th century England. But the question for this week was whether or not Shakespeare knew Galileo. I think in terms of knowing him personally, the answer to this question is no. He probably didn't meet Galileo in person and like shake hands and say, hey man, thanks for writing all this crazy stuff. Now my plays are awesome. No, I don't think that happened. What I do think happened is that Shakespeare was aware of Galileo. So he knew Galileo's works and he knew who Galileo was. And as a side note, before you go, Galileo outlived Shakespeare by 26 years. So almost 30 years longer than William Shakespeare himself, which was interesting to me because so many papers that I've read about Shakespeare claim that 52 was a ripe old age for people in Renaissance England. And maybe it was, maybe people in England just didn't live that long, but I think people in Italy lived into their eighties. So why is that? It brings up an interesting question, which we will cover in another episode. That's it for this week here at Did Shakespeare. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something interesting about the Bard. I'm Casty Cash, and I'll see you next week on Did Shakespeare. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Every like that we get on this video or comment that you want to share with us helps us take this information to more people. And as Shakespeareans, we love our friends. So share this with your friend, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.